Hey there, Internet. <laughs> Welcome to uh, Fireside with Peter Adkison here on Gen Con TV. Um, I am Peter Adkison. My co-host is Beverly Marshall Sailing, and today's guest is Lisa Stevens. And our, uh, what we do on this show is we go looking for the untold stories behind your favorite games. And this season, that game is Magic the Gathering. And let me tell you, <coughs> this gal has some stories. You will not be <laughs> disappointed. Lisa, welcome. Yay! Thank you, Peter. Thanks, Beverly. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, <laughs> I, we're, I'm we've like, already been talking we, all morning. So it's we just have like so it's many <laughs> stories. Oh, yeah. like, uh, okay. So, so quickly before, I mean, okay. Where we like to start with is before Wizards, mm -hmm. before Magic the Gathering. You were doing something. I mean, you were alive when we hired you. You, yeah. you had a you, you had a job. What, what was that? What were you doing before mm -hmm. you heard about us? So at, before Wizards of the Ghost, um, I was actually at White Wolf uh, down in Atlanta, Georgia. And it was a very, very early days of White Wolf Publishing. In fact, we had just kind of formed the company right. not that long, maybe uh, about a year before. And White Wolf, the, the company that produced uh, Vampire the Masquerade. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. The whole World of Darkness franchise, mm -hmm. uh, an RPG <coughs> company that uh, we very well respected and loved. Company. Exactly. And so, Ars Magica. And Ars Magica. Magica. Yes, mm -hmm. that's right. Uh, so, you know, so I was down there yeah. working on Vampire. Mm -hmm. and, uh, in so, Atlanta. In right? Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was doing sales, marketing, uh, editing. Uh, just about anything that you know they could get me to do at the time. The small companies that happen. Small company stuff. Many hats. Right. Small cap and so, many hats. And, and you were there when White Wolf launched Vampire. I was. Great, I was. Right? It was that actually at Origins that year we launched it and mm -hmm. yeah. stuff. But yeah, it was. Yeah. It was. It was there. awesome. Were, so I got mm -hmm. to see it take off like a shot. You have a habit of being at a company that comes out with a hit. Mm -hmm. I like to think about. It. I think that that's true. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, it's kind of fun. That's uh, good talent. Good talent. Yeah. Well, yeah it's, a, it's a good talent to have if it's you could possibly have it, right? You're to be lucky mm -hmm. than good. That's what I say. Okay, so uh, so you're a white wolf, and somehow you ended up at Wizards. Oh, so I, I, tell, tell that story. Tell, tell that story. Mm -hmm. All right, so this it, it, this is a weird thing about about like life, and I, I think about these things all the time, that there's uh, all these circumstantial things that have to happen mm -hmm. for you to actually mm -hmm. get to where mm -hmm. you were and you know, how you got there. So... How did I get to, to Wizards? Wizards? Yeah. So I was at the Gamma Trade Show. The Gamma Trade Show, for those of you who don't know, is actually a trade show that the uh, Game Manufacturers Association tabletop puts on games. every year mm -hmm. with yeah. tabletop it's, games. It's really our only one. I mean, it's a small yeah. show, although it's getting bigger. I mean, but if you want to do business <coughs> in the world of tabletop games, you got to go to the Gamma Trade Show. That's exactly. the industry show. That's, yeah. that's the industry show. Exactly. Right. So that this is the Wayback Machine back to 1991, I think. Yeah, it was 1991. Yes. Mm -hmm. 1991 Gamma I can Trade verify. Show. 1991. Right. Yes. Absolutely. And, and so this was before Magic <coughs> came out, because Magic came out in 1993. Right. Three. In fact, it was before Wizards had published any products at Correct. all. Correct. Right? Right. So you had ideas. Not Lots for lack of, of trying. Right. Lots of ideas. Not for lack of trying. Actually, yeah, I, think, I think you did yeah. do something for a convention once, but anyway, we won't go well, there. Yeah, yeah, we won't yeah, go yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a wedding announcement. Yeah, and, there's a few yeah, things a couple in there. of things that were, yeah, were not big And a t-shirt. And a t-shirt. But anyway, so I'm at the Gamma Trade Show, and there's a like a lunch for the attendees. And right. Peter had had the foresight to, to send a guy named Rich Kalis mm -hmm. to the show to do some scouting, to learn a little bit from. I was shy. And, and Rich, Rich was more handsome. Rich was you. young <laughs> and handsome. And and that just, helps. Uh -huh, I just thought uh -huh. we to send one person to the trade show. Should it be me? No, I think I should send our really handsome sales guy to the mm -hmm. show. Smart play. <laughs> mm-hmm. So anyway, I'm, 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 you know, I'm going to eat lunch, and I, I'm looking for a place to sit, and I sit down next to this guy who's sitting at this table, and there's a spot next to him, and we start up a chat. Mm -hmm. and he introduces himself and says, oh, you know, me and some friends, we're starting a game company up in, 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 in Seattle, Washington. And I said, mm -hmm. what, what have you made? And he goes, well, we haven't made anything yet. And he gave me the story about how his, you know, the, you know, the president sent him down to, 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 you know. Reconnoiter. To reconnoiter and stuff. And so yeah. we, we struck up a friendship. And then so after that, I end up... Uh, getting on this crazy billboard thing that Kent McLaughlin mm -hmm. had put up at the you know when he was at the UW and I would like I would like find this way to like worm my way through all these little uh, local modems all the way to Seattle so I didn't have to pay money to talk and mm -hmm. so yeah. I'd be on there right. and chat you know ty typing away and, and, and I kind of throw you know, from, from our perspective what was so interesting about this when Rich comes back is this like you never believe who I met. I met a vice president at White Wolf, and she knows 
everything about the industry. She knows everybody in the industry. <laughs> she knows all the stuff that we had no idea. Like we, we didn't know it. anything. How, do you, <laughs> How <laughs> do you have a product line? Trust me, we all started there. How do you have a product line? How do you price it? Yeah. Who do you sell it to? Yeah. Right. What what margins should you be targeting? Right. What well, discounts? Where do you find printers? And where do you yeah. Find yeah, yeah. What printers are like going to actually do small runs for you? The wealth of information <coughs> that you brought to the company was incredible. Completely right? invaluable. Completely. Yeah. So 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 anyway, so I'm you know I'm talking and I and I start chatting with Peter here and 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 so we start. I can remember very early in the morning getting up and you're already on and we were we'd spend hours. Just chatting and little type, you know, just doing yeah. type chats and stuff. And then we start talking on the phone. And so that summer, you invite me out to Seattle, right? <coughs> on a vacation. I hadn't had a vacation in like a zillion years. Right. And so you invite me to come out to Seattle. And so the the moment I remember. So how did I end up with the coast? It was on this trip. Yes. And. Peter puts the full court press on me, right? Mm -hmm. Like, okay, we, we want to hire you, have you come up. It's a long ways. I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. I've right. never been to right. Seattle in my lifetime. It's the first time. Right. They, they show me how beautiful it is. We go around. Mm -hmm. But there was this one seminal moment. We go down, and this is going to sound kind of funny. We go down to the golf course near your house, yeah. and we're sitting <laughs> along the Green River, on the banks right. of the Green yeah. River. And we were just talking about our dreams, about what we want to do in our lives, what right, we what we're right. excited about, and just and we we're just kind of sharing mm -hmm. those dreams, and and I you know and, and I asked Peter like what does he want, and and he and he looked him in the eye and he said, I want to make all my friends millionaires. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. Yep. And I believed him. Even oh though, God! Yeah, even we though all we did. had no plan and no products uh -huh. and nothing. I mean, there wasn't any. I, but I, I, I met all you know you guys there too at mm -hmm. the same time, and I can see there's really good people here, right? Smart people, good people. And they're all enthusiastic and smart. And smart is really important because mm -hmm. you know that's that's you surround yourself with good people, you can figure out what you're hell you're gonna do, right? Mm -hmm. I, I think I like to think that we were smart to know what we didn't know. <coughs> yeah, and I think and, that was the other and, thing, right? And it was right? a really long list. Mm -hmm. But you know, if but, you know what you don't know, mm -hmm. then, you know. Well, and you can admit to yourself that you don't know it. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. So you know, so I, but after the, after that little thing, I was like, I'm in, you know, and so yeah. we, yeah. you know, we we flew so, down. You so know. we hired. So we hired you. <laughs> so you hired I me. I hired you, uh, and and it was our first. It was hard for me because <laughs> we didn't have any money, and I your situation I, was we had to pay you a salary. And I hadn't so paid you, anybody. Do, do you remember how we came up with my salary? <laughs> You, you asked me what my costs were, what my expenses were, like rent, mm -hmm. right. car payment, right. whatever, mm -hmm. and that's what you paid me. Right. I had little, zero savings. <laughs> there was no extra money at all. It was like, yeah, we were tight. I, I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure it was coming out of your salary from Boeing, too. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there was probably more than once that you paid me. Yeah, uh, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, probably. Uh, it's all kind of was, a blur. It but is. Yeah, I mean, that's why blur. I kept working at Boeing for three years. So mm -hmm, exactly. Because that was the biggest source of You had a family had. to support. I had a family to support. Exactly. Right. So, uh, so we, we, and I had to go back to everybody. We had to socialize that and say, yeah, we got to do that. this. Right. And, um, and so we agreed to bring you out. And so I... I remember fondly the trip. <laughs> I don't remember it hardly at all, but because I was, I had, a, I had like a fever. So, so it was like, well, basically, I flew to Atlanta. Yep. How and we, pack up this big and truck? we rented a U-Haul mm -hmm. and packed all your shit in the U-Haul. My car was on and, the back. And, and then your car was being towed behind the U-Haul. <coughs> and we drove from Atlanta to Seattle, right? Mm -hmm. With my dog. With my big Siberian husky dog. With a in the Siberian front cab. husky <laughs> in summer. In summertime, <laughs> in like 80 some degree heat. And not just any Siberian husky. So now, 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 now just try to blow past, you know, whatever sort of. Uh, I mean, we were so naive and young. We weren't aware that, you know, a. A, the male head of a company should probably not go out and accompany a new female employee across the country. I mean, didn't, you didn't think she about had it. a dog. We didn't, we didn't, she, she had, had a dog. dog with me. We didn't think about that. And if you're wondering, like, well, what were the accommodations in the hotel rooms? We, we slept in the cabin. We didn't have enough money for hotel <laughs> yeah, rooms. That was not an issue. We took turns sleeping in the cab of the front truck, or, or, in, in, or on the on the grass <laughs> in the rest areas. Yeah, one night. Yeah, one night I got so tired of of us sleeping in the cab sitting up that mm -hmm. I just it was a really hot night yep I just went and and laid down on the grass in a rest stop where we stopped and uh, about five o'clock in the morning the sprinklers came <laughs> on <laughs> 
<laughs> and all of a sudden, it's a <laughs> rude awakening. I'm running over the trunk, just soaking wet. Because so I mean, wet. it was just like <laughs> right at me, you know. It's like, ugh. That yeah. woke me up quick. Yeah. <laughs> so, it was a great trip. It was we fun. We had fun trip. with your dog, Monoma Wait, Falls. Yeah, that's um, right. Yeah, this dog was so uh, hyperactive. A, hyperactive. Oh, yeah. That, just, um, I took to calling her Ripper. So when we were out walking up the trail in Wilma Falls and passing other people, I'd like make a big show of, oh, easy Ripper, oh, easy. No, no, not kill, not kill, <laughs> easy Ripper. People were back, people were one the, off the trail to get around us. Yeah, yeah. So it was, it was hilarious. Was, it was one time. So, so we got you up to, uh, we, we got you up to, uh, <clears throat> Wherever we are, right. Seattle. Yeah. So, so like, I, mean, I think there's one story we're kind of missing in here. So, oh. from the the point where where you ended up uh, convincing me to come up, I, I still went back to Atlanta because I had two mm-hmm. weddings to go to. My sister Kim got married, and then uh, my friend Anne McDonough got married. Anne and Chris McDonough got, right. ended up getting married in Atlanta, and so during that time, you met a guy named Mike Davis. Yes. At mm-hmm. a local convention in Seattle, and I, I I remember I get this phone call from Peter. And, and, and you, you were basically like, he's got this game, it's called Robo Rally, and it's about this robots in, a, in, a, mm-hmm. in a, this factory maze with all this dangerous stuff. And, mm-hmm. and I'm like, dude, those are so expensive to make, and I don't know how we're gonna, we can make this thing. And he goes, but he really wants to work with us. This, it's, it's this, you know, he's got this friend, Richard Garfield, who's, you know, he's this great game designer, who just has all these game designs. And I'm just like, well, he doesn't have anything else. And then, so you went back to Richard, right. and, 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 and I think the story's probably been told a zillion times before, mm-hmm. how you went and said, yeah, can we need something smaller, portable, I don't know, you know something you could play while like you're a, waiting in line, or right, at a restaurant, or a, a card sim- game, a right. A card mm-hmm. game. And, and, well, the other piece of that had been that I had um, noticed that if you went to science fiction fantasy conventions like Northwest Con, yeah. Dream Con, other conventions mm-hmm. that I, I was a fan of going to, um, that I would see all this art, this mm-hmm. fantasy and science fiction art that wasn't getting published, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. That, was in, that was color, because the market for color fantasy, mm-hmm. there wasn't it's much expensive, demand yeah. for yeah. it. Yeah, it was expensive, yeah. There was consumer demand. People wanted this art. We didn't really realize how badly at the time, mm-hmm. but there was... Um, but publishers weren't printing much uh, mm-hmm. color art because it was too expensive, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And <clears throat> most well, RPG books were black and white. Maybe they'd have a color cover. Usually they have a color cover, to be honest, mm-hmm. right? But um, the interior was usually black and white, mm-hmm. and there was far fewer of them. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. yeah. So we, anyway. So, so you you go back, and yeah. then Richard has a game, The Five Magics, he called it at the time, right, I think. Right, right. And... Uh, and 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 he says, okay, well, you'll send us some cards, and that's about the time that when we do the trip, come up, and and the, I think like the first week I'm in the office, a package arrives from Richard. Mm-hmm. He's in Pennsylvania at the time, right? And right. And, and a package so comes with about, all these. Yeah. Um, so sep- this would have September. been around September of mm-hmm. 1992. Two. Two. You. Uh, no one. One. You're right. Yeah, one. Yeah, it yeah. had to be one. Yeah, you're right. Two years. What was yeah, because. Ninety two was the year us. of Talislanta yeah. and Primal Order and stuff. Yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah, the audience yeah, need to we need to check each other on dates. Yeah, it's so hard to get the It starts right. going, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's okay, ninety one, right. right. Yeah, September right. ninety one. Yeah. And uh, this big, you know, thing of, of, of just basically loose cards comes up. Although he I think he kinda of collated them in the decks because I think he was trying to you know already He deal, did put them in decks. Or, he was mm-hmm. already starting to deal with like wanting to have rare cards that like I had cards that you didn't have, and you had cards mm-hmm. that I didn't have, and then we'd play each other, and you'd be like, "What the heck is that?" You know, and because that was right. Richard was enamored with that mm-hmm. idea of from the beginning, of, of from the very beginning, that mm-hmm. there would be rare cards that no, maybe most people hadn't seen, and then when they get mm-hmm. played during a the game, mm-hmm. they'd be like, "What's a Shivan Dragon?" Right, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Right. You know, not right. realizing it would just there'd be so many Shivan Dragons out there that everybody would have one or see mm-hmm. one. You yeah. know, we didn't realize how big it'd get, but in our mm-hmm. small pool, it was kind of fun because you would have a card and people yeah. would be like, what does that do? And so there was a lot of that kind of cool stuff. And of course, then we started just all playing. I mean, it was we, hard to get work st- done. <laughs> yeah. We, there was like two weeks where we didn't do anything but play magic. I mean, these, mm-hmm. these, when the playtest cards arrived at the at the Watsi office, which was the basement of my home. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, basement which I was, Yeah, mm-hmm. which I was renting. I mean, it was even a real proper home. <laughs> <coughs> um, when the, those cards arrived and we broke them out and handed them out to all the, I say employees, but mm-hmm. it was... It was a couple of Shareholder, employees, shareholders, shareholders yeah, that was people that, that came mm-hmm. and volunteered yeah. time yep. uh, mm-hmm. at the company, and um, uh, and people took it and started playing. It was just nonstop playing. We were immediately. Mm-hmm. Yep. I, I, I think I told you at the time. I said this could be big. 
And I, I think I think I even said I thought it might make a million dollars. You told me that's just ludicrous. Nothing could. <laughs> Yeah. We'd never make a million dollars off this thing. I, 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 but yeah. maybe at least a million. It might have been you. I think Tim McLaughlin. Has <laughs> Did but I can see ha- I, that's probably a conversation I had more than once. Probably. <laughs> yeah. But I was, I mean, I remember I was terrified someone would steal the idea. Oh, yeah. Yes. We were terrified. Because we were so small, we had no money. I mean, how do you, yeah. make, how do you make this thing? Right. You right. know, that was, that was the, you know, the crazy thing is like, how do you do this, right? How do you, how do you, your idea of all this color artwork, well, color artwork is expensive. I, I remember the, when you guys, uh, I was telling you guys about how me and Dave Howell used to play at the laundromat yeah. while we were getting our, our stuff done, and, and people would come over and say, what are you playing? And we had to say, oh, no, we can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and we'd, like, hide it. <laughs> well, yeah, there was a lot of questions about how we would get this made. I call them the four big questions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and um, uh, the big, the first uh, big question, you know, came from uh, Richard Garfield himself when I first mm-hmm. met him. And he, uh, there was a meeting before the play test decks so, mm-hmm. um, when he yep. came up to Seattle, yep. and he described to me the concept of the idea. He hadn't designed the game yet. He just mm-hmm. like two or three nights before, you know, between when I met when I met him a week earlier, talking about Robo Rally, mm-hmm. sort of had this eureka idea that uh, of of what a collectible card game would be, and collecting mm-hmm. cards, and you play your deck versus somebody else's deck, mm-hmm. and blah blah blah. And he described it to me, and and I got very excited immediately about it. And Richard was like, "Wait a minute, don't." get too excited i don't know if it's possible to design this game i don't know if it's going to be fun like mm-hmm. it certainly wouldn't be fun to play poker if everybody could just pick which cards are in their hands right mm-hmm. um <laughs> so oh you've got a royal flush too all huh? right <laughs> great <laughs> so uh you know and then there's yeah, how to yeah, print yeah. it there was how to get that much art how, how to, to raise, some the money. Art. raise some money raise some money those yeah. were the, yeah. sort of the challenges right I could, yeah, so i think the funny part about the, the printing part is interesting because uh I, so I was doing a lot of the print buying back then, mm-hmm. and so I was, you know, incumbent upon me to try to figure this out. And uh, you know, I remember, uh, you know, we were, I would, I'd call up a card mm-hmm. company, like a, someone that made like, you know, a deck of playing cards, right? And they just, they, they were set up to make fifty-two cards in a same, you know, same mm-hmm. order every deck, same order, mm-hmm. no randomization at all. Right. All the guys that can do randomization. They were all making baseball cards and football cards and mm-hmm. stuff, and they that you can't play with. But you yeah. can't play can't with because they bent and stuff. So mm-hmm. nobody had that magic, you know, mm-hmm. moment mm-hmm. of of of. And, and and I remember us having. I remember Ken having this crazy idea, but Ken, this, Ken and maybe mm-hmm. Dave Howell, this yeah. big blower that was going to blow all these <laughs> cards and, and this big thing and he, mix them all he up. He sketched and, and, it on adapted. <laughs> I wish to God I still have that wish adapted. Wish we did too. Mm-hmm. He, 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 a conveyor belt. Mm-hmm. The cards, they'd print the cards and they would come off the printer and land on a conveyor belt and it would go to this <laughs> blower like a lotto machine, exactly. you know? Like the cards would just blow, blow, blow up and you'd just reach in and grab the cards as you needed them. Because you know? we'd make, we'd make each deck hand by hand, right? Yeah, that was the idea. Because, <laughs> you know, of course we could do that. We weren't going to sell that many. Of course. Right, of course. <laughs> exactly. And so, and so I remember the, the moment that we, because that was like the hardest thing not to crack. I mean, we had figured mm-hmm. the rest of it out. but And we had a game that we were happy with and stuff, but I just don't know how to print it. And then my old White Wolf connection stepped right. in. It was, uh, it was Mark, uh, Ryan, Mark Ryan Hagen and mm-hmm. Steve Wick. Right. Uh, basically Wick. came and, and introduced us a guy named Luke Mertens from a mm-hmm. company called Cardamundi in Belgium. Mm-hmm. And Luke had, was at Gen Con that year. Yes. Gen Con? Mm-hmm. Best four Two. days in gaming. Best four days in yeah. gaming. Um, right. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> I know how to do my little marketing branding. <laughs> so, you know. Anyway, so we're at Gen Con and we meet... We meet Luke Mertens. I remember you brought him over to the booth. Ms. Lisa, Lisa Stevens from White Wolf, a renaissance in games. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. I'm embarrassed. I don't know the Paizo tagline. What's the Paizo? What's the, I don't you know. Know. What's what? the Gollum God? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. That was when we back in like 2003. Oh, I don't know how much do we have a tagline anymore. Oh anyway, God. so I remember. So he, he, they, they introduced us to him because he had talked to them about if they had any game stuff. And they knew, <clears> they knew that we were working on this game because remember right. we tried to get some investment from them. Right. And so right. They, mm-hmm. they, they knew. And so they knew we were yeah. working on this game. And so when we meet, met Luke, he was well, like. Well, this answers, by the way, this story answers the question I always had because, yes, we had talked to them about it. But I don't remember ever talking to them about um, the printer issue. And um, But you must have. Because, I must have. Because. When we met with Luke in Gen Con in 1992, Luke Mertens from Card of Monday, who would eventually end up printing uh, mm-hmm. magic cards right. for us, uh, the answer to this big problem we're talking about, um, 
Mark Reidenhagen came up to me and said, I've, I've, I've solved your, your printing dilemma. Yeah, and, I'm sure I was asking. I was calling and, everybody and, trying to figure and out. And I'm sitting here going, oh, good. Mm -hmm. And how do you know about my printing dilemma? <laughs> 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 I'm only now hearing that piece of it. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. That's probably, probably what happened. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm pretty sure I was on the phone to anybody I knew saying, do you know any printer? Do you know anybody? You know, yeah. we're, we're yeah. Getting, I was starting to get desperate. It's 92, mm -hmm. so like mm -hmm. right. we're, and, you know, a year away from when we leased Magic, and I didn't know how to print it yet. Mm -hmm. And to his credit, I mean, Luke did. I mean, he, uh, we went to lunch, and yeah. uh, I made him play Magic. I made him demo the game, and he always, I think that's one of his favorite stories to tell because he'll say, I don't play games. I just yeah, print right. cards. <laughs> <laughs> Luke is not, mm -hmm. he is not a gamer. Mm -hmm. um, but I said, no, you're not going to really understand what this game is and mm -hmm. how it should be printed if you don't play it. I, mm -hmm. I think I was right. I think mm -hmm. You probably were. I, so I, I, I just, right. Vic and I just had, you know, uh, Vic's my husband. We, 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 we just had a dinner with Vic. Vic Wirtz, also an early Wizard of the Coast employee. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. yep, yep. And he was, uh, so we, and we were in Germany a few weeks ago and we met up with Luke Mertens at dinner and we were reminiscing about the, you know, the early mm -hmm. days. And he told me a sto that story, which I, I, had, I didn't know at the time. And he said, if we would have met anybody else from Kurtamundi, about our, right. our printing right. problem, yeah. mm -hmm. they wouldn't have known what to do. But they didn't have anybody else, did they? Yeah, they did. he said they did, but I never we in my needed life to, saw somebody other than Luke Mertens from Cardinal Money. But we needed gaming show. we needed mm -hmm. to find Luke Mertens that of Cardinal Money, yeah. and no one else in Cardinal Money would have figured and known how to do. He said, right. and and so we literally it was a needle in a haystack. It's like this guy and this company, and you know at this. Right. I mean, it was that like, was it. And yeah. it, and if without Luke Mertens, I don't know we ever make Magic the Gathering, mm -hmm. I, I mean, or maybe not as well as we it did. It could have been horrible. I mean, yeah. I mean, we would have somehow figured out something we had too mm -hmm. big of an opportunity but who knows Probably. maybe we would have run out of money or maybe we, i mean who knows who knows who knows or the randomization wouldn't work right and people wouldn't, wouldn't have been played, able to play it would have been a fun yeah. game like who knows right i mean so yeah. It, yeah, you think about you think about again one of those things like we had to find that guy you know at that time <clears throat> mm -hmm. and, and it's just you know that's that's just that's what's so cool about life, right? So you're saying, I mean, of course, Richard Garfield was the most important person having right. to do with Magic Gathering. Mm -hmm. I always figured second to that was Lisa Stevens. But mm -hmm. now I'm, you're, you're saying Luke Mertens was probably more important than... Probably. Luke. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. know. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just hard. we don't find Luke without Lisa. It's hard so. to tell. I know. But, I know. You know, I know. that's Snap. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Probably yeah. not. All right. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, buy that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll buy that. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, and John Causality. Of course, for writing some checks. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so yeah. that's how. So we get, you know, we get in Magic the Gathering. Yes. It's being printed. Yeah, fine stuff. So so uh, this this is a story. I think I, I told you before. I think it's a story. I'm not sure I've ever told you the story. Uh oh. Because mm -hmm. I was actually, it, it, it was it was something. That so uh -oh. people need to understand uh -oh. that Wizards of the Coast was a small little company. We're in Peter's oh, yeah. basement, mostly yes. volunteers. Not many yes. people actually at the time. None of us were getting paid because of a little lawsuit. Yeah, that we won't talk about. But oh. <laughs> so we yeah, were, so we yeah yeah so we, we were all we, getting yeah just not to fill getting a little bit of that gap here after we hired Lisa right in um, ninety one nineteen ninety one brought her out uh, right. to Seattle. Uh, we went a whole year focusing mainly on a role play game, and Prime, Prime Order, Order. Order. Mm -hmm. yep. right, which we published right. in ninety two. Yeah, we mm -hmm. did a lot of stuff for like and maybe like 10, 12 books. I don't know, we did yeah. a lot of stuff. We did a yeah, whole line. believe me, it was plenty of stuff. It was plenty of work for. It was plenty, it was plenty of words. <laughs> so these are books. So Beverly mm -hmm. had a lot to do. Yeah, and, and we yeah. So anyway. And we sold the books, but yeah, we made like fifty thousand dollars that year, I think, or something. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> we did a little better than that, but not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it wasn't enough. It was. And we ended up in a lawsuit because we made some perhaps poor choices. Yeah, um, I still think they're a fine way. Um, but whatever. Uh, well, we were court documents sealed. You know, trademark. Trade their trademark. Uh, um, there was possibly a trademark infringement. There was a claim. <coughs> oh, we're concerned about trademark infringement. And mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. anyway, but we so settled we, it. But we shut down for a while, and we did settle. We did. We did we settle it. it. Mm -hmm. And we got through it. But, but meanwhile, we, we didn't have any money, and so all of us were working for free, right? And yes. so we were working for less than that because some of us were also getting pimped out to other companies for. Email. Oh yeah, I order for that part too. Yeah. Uh, we worked on we worked on a yes, we uh, Ed Greenwood uh, thing mm -hmm. at that point. I remember we worked on uh, what, what was this? We, 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 we got pimped out. North. You pimped me out to White Wolf in return for an ad. In White Wolf magazine, <laughs> I had to edit a. I, I believe you, but that. I don't remember yeah. this at all. 
I, although I can certainly imagine, you know, White Wolf really needs an editor. Oh. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean at that time, right? It needs. Mm -hmm. oh, so, so, anyways, <laughs> we're we're all in, right? right. We're all we in. Are. We're we're like like we're all our in. money. You know, we we got our invest investment. Mm -hmm. Every penny was going into magic, right? Mm -hmm. and, we, and we were just like, this is our gambit. You know, we're gonna we're gonna make this game, and if it takes off, we're good. If mm -hmm. not, end of story, right? right. So mm -hmm. we're all in. And so at the time, I was doing sales, and we we actually. Like took a thousand bucks to put an ad in uh, the, the 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 catalog for Capital City's just Capital City Distribution. Mm -hmm. uh, Capital City back then was the largest comic distributor. They were bigger mm -hmm. than Diamond Comics, mm -hmm. and they were they were like we would do a book like The Complete Alchemist, and mm -hmm. they, they ordered like two hundred fifty copies, mm -hmm. and everybody else was like wanting forty, fifty, mm -hmm. sixty, maybe. Mm -hmm. So they were by far our biggest account. Mm -hmm. So we decided to put an ad. Uh, in, 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 their, in their catalog to try to drive sales. Right. Mm -hmm. And so they always were one of the first orders we'd ever get, right, for Magic. Mm -hmm. They were always one of the first orders we'd get because they'd always send stuff and we'd have to tell them, ask, they'd solicit like three months in advance and they would get me the stuff like two months in advance and then I, I'd call people up mm -hmm. right before, like maybe a week or so before it shipped mm -hmm. and get the other orders. So, so right. Peter kind of knew that this was happening. Right. So, right. And mm -hmm. he was rightfully just a little bit stressed out by this whole mm -hmm. process of getting the this game launched mm -hmm. and all the money and all this stuff mm -hmm. it's stressful at times when you're when you're dealing with that so he's 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 bugging me about that it sounds like a caveat to bad behavior <laughs> <laughs> and so, he was really stressed in those times so <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> so I, please continue I, I get the so i get the I, a packet of orders from from mm -hmm. that catalog and, and, and I think that was actually one of the complete alchemist was in there actually. Mm -hmm. I think it was like 250 copies or 260 or something. And I get the ones from Magic the Gathering and they ordered one deck and six booster packs. Not one display, mm -hmm. not, not six displays, yeah. one deck and six booster packs for a grand total of like $32 or something mm -hmm. like that of, of, of sales. Ooh. And I, my, 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 my literally my, my, Everything felt my my stomach. It just it mm -hmm. just it went and just like holy shit, we're done. We're just so hosed, you know. Yeah. I, I, we we we, so we spent a thousand dollars to try to put this in mm -hmm. ad in there to try to drive sales, right. and we couldn't sell even the same amount of copies as the complete alchemist. I mean, <laughs> and, 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 and 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 so I hid that thing. I put it in the bottom. I buried it in a whole lot of stuff. And every time you'd ask, I'd lie and say we never haven't got it yet. Mm -hmm. And I hope you wouldn't think about asking me again because I don't know how many times I could lie and tell you that. Because mm -hmm. I was just afraid if I showed that to you, you would just despair and yeah. give up. Because at that time, we had no choice but to follow through and, and, and get it right. out because yeah. it was already at the printer. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, it was, it was like, it's mm -hmm. not going to do anybody any good to worry about the fact that our largest stripper just ordered six booster packs in one deck. Mm -hmm. yeah. That just, there was no, you know, we can't mm -hmm. do anything about that. Let's just move right. on and see what else we can do. And mm -hmm. so I don't know if you remember, we came, but you and I came up with this crazy idea at the time, and we, we made these little coupons that said "putting my money where my mouth is." You remember yes. that? And so mm -hmm. and, and so we sent these to the distributors, and then yeah, there was one with you and one with me. And I was where I was warehouse labor, and you were like the janitor, janitor right? Mm -hmm, right? Right. Which right. was yeah. and so and we and we put those out there. We sent them everybody, and it basically said, "We have a hundred percent. We'll keep." give you 100% returnability in your first order of Mads at the Gathering, right? Because mm -hmm. right? Right. we figured, well, if we give them 100% returnability, maybe they'll order a bunch, and that's you, you can't sell it if it's not, you're not ordering it. Right. And so what do we have to lose? Because all our money's in. You know, yeah. if, it, if it fails, there's no money to re refund anyways. Right. If it doesn't sell, we're going to go out of business. I mean, they, they, yeah. they, they could say, hey, I want to return this. I'm like, great, well, we're out of business. So, mm -hmm. I mean, if, you know, if they're going to all return it, we're done. Which I now understand has uh, <laughs> certain ethical <laughs> yeah. problems. But when you're under the gun and you're young and stuff, it's, you know, it's just you do what you have to do. S sad but true. So Not entirely proud of that moment. But you're ah, right. you know, it's, it is what you do, right? Yeah. And, and and so we just had you had the confidence that it was going to work out well for them so if they Adler. just did it. Oh, so, I, and by the way, the distributors <laughs> actually look 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 on that very fondly. I, I, so many of those guys still have their their little coupon in their oh, wallets. I've had so many goodness. of them come up to me and show it to me and say, "Remember this." I never had to use it, so they mm -hmm. still have it, right? Mm -hmm. And and so there's one funny. It's a good thing we said it was only for the first expansion. Otherwise, yeah, Fallen it was the Empires first came out. <laughs> <laughs> just, just 
the first shipment, actually. First, first shipment. Your first order. First shipment. Mm -hmm. First order, no reorders, just the first shipment. Mm -hmm. So, funny story about the time is there was, uh, so you were, remember, you were taking that little trip down the West Coast, yes. visiting all mm -hmm. the, the retail yes. stores, yes. drumming up support on the way to Gen Con that year. Right. So this was right before the release of Magic the Gathering, mm -hmm. what Lisa's right. referring to, is uh, as a way to uh, promote the release, um, mm -hmm. I did a, a tour uh, with Kathy. We drove down the the west coast and then over to Albuquerque and then Denver and flew to yeah. Denver from there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I think you drove the whole way, didn't you? We flew uh -huh. all the way down the coast. Oh, right. uh, we ended in Denver. We flew from Denver. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, but, but you know, so at the time you were, oh, this the game was just basically every time Peter would hit a, a store, mm -hmm. yeah. he'd make all these converts and then they would actually sometimes drive to the next store <laughs> and stuff <laughs> to buy more cards. And so there was this kind of wave yes. of West Coast converts mm -hmm. and, and those stores were like frantic to get magic. So all the West Coast distributors were selling out of magic, right? So, yes. ma you know, magic launches and... Especially War Games West. Yep, the War, War Games West, West but also the distributor. Like Chessex West, and there was Chessex a couple other. Berkeley. Berkeley was slow to adopt magic. Yeah, but... Yeah, you know. Michael Sloan came and apologized to me about that years later. He's like, <laughs> he just, like, I couldn't get past the idea that it was uh, comparing magic to... Um, there had been a Dungeons & Dragons... A, um, trading cards product yeah, 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 or trivia one. product yeah, 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 or yeah, something yeah. like mm -hmm. something with cards on it that was fantasy Dungeons yeah, and Dragons was... that um, that had flopped and yeah. he's like just couldn't get out of the mindset of comparing it to that mm -hmm. and it didn't it took anyway but so 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 you're you're drumming up support I'm starting to get you know those <clears throat> some distributors are starting to get excited and they're starting to want to buy stuff and I so I'm, I'm calling around to all my distributors there's this little distributor in Georgia at the time, uh, and I call him up on the phone, I'll never forget this, I say, hey, how are things going? Expecting to hear, great, things are really taking off and stuff, and he's like, I was hoping you'd call because I haven't sold a single one of those their magic cards and I don't want to return the whole thing. <laughs> and, and I had a list of retailers on, next to my <laughs> phone, for all, and I'd be calling all day Who looking for magic. Wanted it, yeah. You know where magic is, right? <laughs> And so what I did is I, th I, I, I pretended, hey, hang on, hang on. I got another call coming and I'm put you on hold. So I put him on hold. I sat there for a few minutes and I, 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 I called up all these retailers and said, hey, you know, this hobby store in Atlanta has Magic the Gathering. And I gave him the phone number and then I hung up and went to the next one and called and kept calling, right? Mm -hmm. right. And so, they, and I, you know, then at the end of that, I, I get on the phone and say, Oh, hey, sorry about that. It took a little longer. It was Europe. And I mean, you know, lied about it, of course. Because mm -hmm. you're in sales. Because I'm in sales. Oh, right? Lisa, you're just... <laughs> but I gave him enough time. No, so I no said, shame at so, all. Huh? So I said, so I said, all right, so, um, you know, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll give you an address to ship it back to you. He goes, I don't, want, I don't want to send it back. We just sold it out of all of it. I want to buy more. <laughs> I, I never... I, I, I think I heard a short and abbreviated version mm -hmm. of that story, but without the <laughs> lying just... part. I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is there, you the know, story's much better with the lying. To be honest this is just between days, friends, you know? right? Right, right. 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 What's the yeah. lie on the internet or anything, right? No, it is on the internet, which <laughs> oh, means nobody in real life is going oh, right, to know about it, right? <laughs> just, just those internet people. <laughs> All right, so I, I, I have another fun story. The I people talk. in the know. The people in the know. <laughs> <laughs> and so, All right, so... I have a, so here's a trivia question for you. I don't uh -oh. think you know the answer. By the way, you read notes of stories. Yeah, that's I great. Know. That's awesome. Uh -huh. No, no, yeah, no. That's, that's, that's fabulous. That's so, great. All right. So trivia question. Then. Yes. So okay. if, if, you've, if you read Yes for Miraforce's uh, Facebook, you might know the answer to this one because we talked about it about three or four months ago on his, his, his Facebook. Uh, he was doing old Magic the Gathering stories. But which, so the trivia question, which artist has been on more Magic the Gathering cards than any other Magic artist? Or any other artist? Uh, yes, for I mean, this is a yes for story. So I'm guess, gonna guess <laughs> yes for. Yes for told you. <laughs> is it true confession? It's time from yes for. You mean the the artist on the, the artist the, the artist on whose the artwork okay, is on Magic different. the Gathering on more Magic the Gathering cards than oh, any but than any the other artist. Artist whose artwork whose artwork is on, now, actually okay, yeah. okay not not, not so, who the artist is on because I thought you were going to a different story. Uh, it'd be somebody who did lands, I, right? I, I, I oh yeah. Good point. Are you talking about cards or pieces of art? I'm talking about which artist? <laughs> which pieces? Yeah, you can tell. I'm, there's a little bit of a it's catch on this one. Yeah. The answer is Joe the Ant. <laughs> Joe the Ant. 
Joe the Ant. Joe the Ant. And if you ask yes for it, he would start cackling, and he knows exactly the Joe the Ant story. So when I'm at University of Minnesota, I find out that I, I, I'll just I'll tell this part quick. There's this guy that's giving away his possessions on in, on the in, in, on the you know common green or whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and they say you got to go over. And this guy is giving away his possessions. Some, some my friend had got this really awesome tennis racket. So I go over there. Right. And you had to stand in line. Mm-hmm. And then this guy, was, his, his name is Joe the Ant. He was the Ant for God. And he had decided to devote his life to God, become a hermit, and he gave away all his possessions. Right. And so and God would tell him what you're supposed to get of his possessions. Right. Right. And so okay. I get up there. Mm-hmm. And he looks at me, and he closes his eyes, and he reaches, and he has this painting of this, like, stormy uh, seascape with a castle on it. Right. And, and uh, so he says, God wants you to have this. And so I, I got it. I wrote on the on back, Joe the Ant, the date. And, right. I, and, I, and, I, and I took it home and never thought much about it. So <laughs> flash you know, forward to the fact when we're making Match at the Gathering, and Jesper's designing the card backs. Right. Mm-hmm. And he needs a texture. And for, ah. this, for the little blue that goes around the Magic the Gathering logo. Mm-hmm. And he says, can I use that artwork that you have, you have from <laughs> Joe the Ant? And so I, we scan it in. And, and so that little blue thing is the scan of Joe the Ant's artwork he gave me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so oh, every Magic card my. has Joe the Ant on it. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know that story. That's an awesome. untold either? story. Well, at least yeah. unheard by me well, stories. That's, yeah. yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, so fun stuff, huh? Oh, my mm. gosh. <laughs> That is hilarious. <laughs> well, Everything. yeah, he was right. God, you know, if it's God, maybe if God exists, then that's clearly, that mm-hmm. just about proves it, doesn't it? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure we could have used something else then, too. But, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. speaking of using something else, let's, how about the magic symbol, uh, or the magic expansion symbol story? Yeah, yeah. That's, Tell us about magic expansion. That's, that's a fun story, right? <laughs> right. So, yeah. For all of you guys out there, so this is the early days of Magic. Mm-hmm. We don't really know what the heck we're doing with this game that's runaway success. We don't know. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I because remember. Because no one knows how to manage a trading card game because this right. is. Never happened, never happened yeah. before. Right. And, yeah. I think exactly. I, originally we were going to do Magic the Gathering. And then about, a, you know, then we th- our, had these ideas for like a whole new game called Magic Ice Age and a whole other one called Magic. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, there was a couple other names like. Uh, Lunch money. I don't know. It was, I think they had some weird names to them and stuff. Menagerie. Uh, I think that I think might have been Menagerie. I don't know. Yeah, Menagerie. That's menagerie right. Menagerie was there one. Was, menagerie uh, was one. I remember that. Power Lunch. That was, it. Power it was called Power, Power Lunch. Lunch. Yes. And I think those became something else. They became other things, right? Like Power yeah. Lunch, I think, became Mirage, or Menagerie I think became right, Mirage. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, Ice Age stayed Ice Age. Ice Age but, stayed mm-hmm. Ice Age, yeah. But, you know, okay. it was, so we, the idea was that, you know, we're going to scrap. Magic the Gathering would, would just be that first release, and that was it, and then it'd be right. Magic Clown Ice Age or whatever. Mm-hmm. Right. So, you know, we, I remember we went to Richard, we went out to Philadelphia mm-hmm. to, to, you know. Oh, famous we, meeting. This is before meeting. Magic came out. Right. This is, um, would have been the fall before Magic came out. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. About eight months before in the fall of 1992. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we went out there because all this time that Richard had been working on Magic the Gathering uh, had been, other than the brief meeting we had in Seattle, uh, it had been at the University mm-hmm. of Pennsylvania, right. where he was still in his in his doctorate right. program, mm-hmm. and, and all his play tes- yeah. yeah, and all his players, all his play testers and developers at the time mm-hmm. were all people he was going to school with at the University of Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. So there was a moment where we went out there, you and I, <coughs> and Jesper. I think Vic was there yeah. too, and, and uh, Vic. Yeah, I think it was um, almost everybody that we we're looking that, we're looking that way because yeah, Vic's, Vic's sitting over there. there. Hi, Vic. Uh, Not me, I didn't fly. <laughs> Sorry, go. Not me, I didn't fly. Uh, yeah. So we went out there and we met Richard, uh, who some of us had met, but um, right. we, that was the first time we got to meet, you know, a Scaff bunch of Scaff and Jim Lynn and, and, mm-hmm. and a bunch of other, other people. people. Right. Dave who Petty. Became Dave Petty, yeah. yeah. And mm-hmm. I remember we, 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 I remember us coming up with, this is what a product line could look like, right? Because right. mm-hmm. we hadn't thought about a product line. We were just thinking about getting this thing sold. Mm-hmm. Right. And then we hadn't really thought about what comes next, right? Mm-hmm. It's so much work to release a product, especially for the first time, that it's sometimes difficult to take you know, mm-hmm. to take the time you need to kind of right. step back from it and mm-hmm. say, what are we going to do to follow this mm-hmm. up in the future, right? So, anyway, anyway, yeah, I keep so, cutting so, you yeah, off. Yeah, so no, that's fine, that's fine. 
we, we said we, this is fine. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so here we are. You know, we're we're we're, we're, we're we decided that we needed to get something out quick, right? Mm -hmm. We needed to get something in the marketplace quick, and we, you know, Ice Age was going to take a lot of play testing. It was a big card set, just like mm -hmm. Magic: The Gathering was, and so we came up with the idea for the expansion. And Arabian Nights was the first mm -hmm. one, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And so at that thing, you know, it, we thought, you know, Richard's like, well, we could play off the Arabian Nights mythos. I can write, you know, Sherazad. Mm -hmm. I can just come up with all these these cards and. Mm -hmm. And we'll just, it was something he, he, he was passionate about and would be easy to make. Mm -hmm. So he makes the expansion, we're getting it printed, and the if you've ever seen the box for this, it's got a, you know, you'd the, 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 always, you know, fold it up and the little card back would be at the top of the display, right? And it was a pink card back that yes. said, you know, Magic the Gathering. And, 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 and Richard, because Richard wanted a different color because he wanted to be able to sort the cards out. Right. Of Arabian Nights and Magic the Gathering, mm -hmm. you know, in case right. you didn't want Arabian Nights cards in your in your game. Right. And right. so that was the way he was going to deal with it. So we, we sent it off to Cardamundi. And I don't remember exactly. We must have done something on the internet. We must have posted something. Well, what this, I, is in the early, I, this is before websites. Well, so I always thought, because the, the word got out is where you're going, right? right? right. Is that the word got out that we were going to have it, that the Arabian Nights cards were going to have a different card back. Right. Um, what I thought it was was through your distributor solicitations oh, that there was a picture yeah. of the packaging in be. the solicitations that you sent yeah, to distributors for yeah, the orders. Yeah, yeah. And then... Of course, the distributors turn around and send. Oftentimes, just send a photocopy of the exact same right. uh, mm -hmm. well faxes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> fax machines, yeah, fax machines back then. Right? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, fax it to the well, retailers, colors, and the so. retailers are of course showing it to you know. Yeah. yeah. But see, I mean, so anyway, anyway, the word anyway, got out there. The word got out there, and I, there was a uh, game store in Los Angeles, All Star, right? All Star Games. Games and Comics, and they called me on a Saturday morning. I remember. And 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 I'm for some reason I'm, I'm at work. I always must have been at work all the time. We are always at work. Doing? Yeah, exactly. They're saying you're you're making this huge mistake. You can't change the card backs. And you know I'm talking to the owner. And I'm like, well, it's already at the printer. He goes, oh, this is horrible. This is horrible. You're gonna screw the whole game up. And then and then he said, and here's all my my customers gonna tell you how bad this is. And he kept putting these guys on the phone one after another. And I'm sitting there at like 9:30 in the morning listening to these guys oh, rant I, about how we're oh making this horrible choice. I totally forgot about that. And, and, and I'm the, my my stomach is just <laughs> like, oh my god, what have we done? We just killed the golden uh -huh. goose, right? And and so I remember we 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 Richard was over in Walla Walla at the time. And so we call him on the phone, and we have a like a, on a Sunday. I think it was like a Sunday night or right. Sunday afternoon. We have we get all the major mm -hmm. shareholders and, and people who were working at, at the company at the time, and we have this kind of thing like, what should we do? Right. And Richard was adamant we have to have a way to to to, to tell the expansions apart from the main set. And, and but you know, and he, <coughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like, well, we can't have a different card back, and we're brainstorming. And he's like, well, what, can we do an expansion symbol? Can we do a symbol on the front? Well, it's on like the fr on the card on face. the card face, yeah. right? Instead of right. on the back, so that way the backs stay right. the same. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, we've already sent it to the printer, right? It's that in, in Belgium, we need to go on press Monday morning, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, first exactly. thing, right? Right. And, you know, this must have been Saturday night because we had. I think we had to kind of mm -hmm. get stuff set up the next right. day, so right. it must have been Saturday <laughs> night we had this meeting, right. and and so. And so we decided to do this expansion symbol, and then we're like, well, well what artwork do you have? And we, we <laughs> found this scimitar-looking thing in the Talislana artwork. Mm -hmm, Richard Thomas mm -hmm. had made all this, these, these pictures of weapons, mm -hmm. and we found this, like, that looks like a scimitar. So I remember I, I blew it up as big as I could on our copy machine, mm -hmm. and we faxed it to Cardamundi <laughs> and said, well, you're going to shrink it down. It doesn't matter that it's low res, right? We'll just shrink it down and mm -hmm. it's going to be so small in the thing, it doesn't matter as long as it kind of looks like a cylinder, right? right. Mm -hmm. And then they said, well, yeah, we can drop this onto the card sheets yeah. and, this, and then just use the card back. We already have the card back from Magic mm -hmm. from right. the first set. And so on Monday morning, they did that. Because they, were, they had a card back that we had supplied them right, right. that was pink. Or right, whatever that right, color right. was, they right? Which is what they were set up to do. Right. And so mm -hmm. then it was a question, can you switch back? And well, yeah, of course we can. We'll just use the card back for Magic the Gathering. Exactly. Yeah, we already have that back. Mm -hmm. Which was right. the whole point, right? Right. right. Yeah, the faxed Shimitar for Raby Knights. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, before you start down another... <laughs> I mean, that's great. Thank you. That's an awesome story. Before you start down another, I'm going to check where... we got about 15 more minutes. Right. Uh, and I know we're just getting started, but I was going to check. Do we have any questions from, from the feed, from the World Wide Web? No, no questions from the mm -hmm. World Wide Web? Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. well then. I'll, I'll post the feed, though. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll we, just... oh, oh, you'll look at the feed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that, yeah. <laughs> that, <laughs> Kristen forgot to tell you that was part of your job today. Oh, like... no, I, I've been asking. <laughs> no, no. Okay. <laughs> 
All right. In the meantime, we can keep going. What's your next? Okay. I've gone through most of my list. Beverly, do you have a question? Do you have a question? The, the main question that I have is, what did you think you were going to do when the everything came pouring in and it, we knew it was going to be huge and ginormous? Uh -huh. You know, not that you hadn't had, you know, other successes previously, but that was like an order of magnitude different. You oh. know, what did you think? you were going to have to do to change how you market something that's already that? You know, I, I, it's funny thing. I think the true story is I was just hanging on for dear freaking life. Oh, yeah, well. I mean, it was, it was, <laughs> I always say Magic the Gathering in those days was like drinking from a fire hose. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was just so powerful. And so many things were happening and it was just, you, you just you was, it was a race. And I remember we, we, we just quickly had to find people to do stuff. And I mean, it was mm -hmm. nearest warm body. So like, literally, I mean, mm -hmm. literally, if literally, you, if you breathed and you, and you, and you, had <laughs> if you a, wanted a job at Wizard of the Coast, you could get, you could one. get one at that time. <laughs> if you were alive enough to show up. So I at the time I was hanging out with all of these, uh, uh, the Camarilla up here in Seattle, which mm -hmm. the, the old Vampire the Masquerade live action people. Mm -hmm. And so I was doing a lot of stuff with them since I came from White Wolf before mm -hmm. that. And so <clears throat> our early, I mean, I say vast majority of our early employees were Camarilla members. And we had, mm -hmm. we had a whole goth section of our <laughs> office. We did? Mm -hmm. We had a whole goth section? It was awesome, Rias man. Hall, by the way, is going to be on our show in a, oh, in nice. a, in a few mm -hmm. weeks. I don't remember mm -hmm. exactly when. I um, actually just got uh, friended by Wade Racine yesterday. So. Yeah. Wade Racine was yeah. goth. Kyle Namvar was goth. Mm -hmm. Steve Bishop was goth. Steve Bishop, uh, right. You know, Jeff Harris. Jeff Harris. Jeff Harris. Thank you. Oh, I'm trying to remember his last yeah, name. I'm trying to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Matt. Matt. Uh, uh, what was Matt's oh. name? Oh. Yeah. Matt. Yeah. <laughs> Burke. Matt Burke. Thank Burke. you. Yes. Thanks. Thanks, Vic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there was more, but it was, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, that was kind of what happened. It's like, if you right. knew somebody mm -hmm. and you're like, okay, I, you know, I'm going to introduce you guys to these Well, and you know, I, there's... <laughs> the extreme version of that story. I will leave out, and this is one of those stories where you leave out the name. Mm -hmm. uh, there was the point in time after, after Magic had come out and we were growing rapidly. We were up to 30 employees maybe, and we'd moved into an office. We were making A real money, office. A real office. And um, m my mom was the bookkeeper. Oh, mm -hmm. I remember that. And, uh, <laughs> and, and so like, she comes in, I want to set up a, a payroll mm -hmm. system, you know, and um, I'm like, great. I think that's a great idea. And um, so I uh, said, so what should I, you have a list of employees. And I think I said, well, just walk around the building. And <laughs> <That's> <laughs> how much they make. And, 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 and just assume everybody makes the minimum. Because we pretty much pay, we had sort of a minimum bare, you mm -hmm. know, sort of price. Just pay everybody that unless they speak up. <laughs> and, uh, and there was a guy who was in the office that day who <laughs> didn't actually work there, <laughs> but, but he got put on the payroll. <laughs> <laughs> and got hired oh, and was there for like a year before we figured it out. <laughs> and, there, and I remember that story too. I remember he was, uh, uh, he was doing something kind of involving um, uh, production, back in the production office. And uh, mm -hmm. I remember Jesper came into my office one day and this uh, says, Peter, this guy so-and-so is just driving me crazy. Like, why? And it's like, well, he's just, he's, he doesn't do anything productive <laughs> and he's buying all this equipment. And he's like, I think it's a waste of money that we have him. And I thought this guy worked for Jesper. And I said, mm -hmm. no, he, well, he's your employee. Get him in line, you know, and, and you know, discipline him or fire him. You can fire him and you can, whatever. And Jesper was like, he doesn't work for me. He works for Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and I'm like, Oh, and so Jesper, do you remember this? I think I know who this guy is. So, so yeah. Jesper, yeah, don't, don't say his name. So, his name. So Jesper and I walked into your office and like, Lisa, what what the hell is so-and-so doing back there? You got to get this guy in line. You know, he works for you. And Lisa's like, he doesn't work for me. And I'm like, who the hell does this guy work for? <laughs> I mean that's I hate I mean that story is one of the most embarrassing stories you could possibly but, tell. Like running a company where you have an employee and you don't know. But, and, but and that nobody... was the times. I mean, yeah. It was, uh, yeah. Again, like you're on a fire hose. You just you're, <laughs> so many things are happening. I mean, 
I, I was shedding jobs as fast as I could find someone to take them. I mean, because right. you know, you know, again, we, mm -hmm. we're wearing so many hats, but oh, when yeah. it took off, yeah. you mm -hmm. couldn't do all those hats, right? Right. And so it, it was just like, in all sense, it's like you know, Carol Monahan, you know, mm -hmm. you know, it's like yeah. you're Who in charge of sales. Who will also be on the right? show later? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Carol Monahan's going to be. Yeah, on the exactly. Show so soon. it's just like mm -hmm. you know, Carol, you're, you're, you're hired. You're in charge of sales. You get that drawer in the bottom of my desk. That's your. That's yours <laughs> and stuff. And you know, it's just like whatever. <laughs> You know, and so we were just, you know, we were just young and, and there was so much going on and we didn't, you know, we never, none of us had experience. Right. Well, you this. had experience at least in tabletop yeah, a games. Little, a little bit, but not but even that None level. of us were prepared for what come, but, but there was this well, we were sweet we like moment. managing people, you right. know, there was, yeah. we didn't have like staff that we had to figure out, oh, are they doing what they're yeah. supposed to be doing and do they exactly. have what they need? Exactly. Yeah, do, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, uh, you know, I don't want to under... Uh, undercut how incredibly valuable you were for us because you had actually done sales and marketing mm -hmm. in the tabletop game industry. But never grew mm -hmm. a company like that that right. quickly, right? Sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's that's nobody was, did. Yeah. I mean, finding office space, right? right. I mean, I, yes. I've been living, up to that point, I'd been in people's in houses, right? Mm -hmm. In right. basements of houses, and that's how we ran our businesses because mm -hmm. it was a small cottage industry, right? That's how tabletop sudden, works. Yeah. And all of a sudden, we're in a real company and we have, and we have to have we hired a lawyer. We hired, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Right, Things that right. just you never mm -hmm. thought you'd had to do. An HR person or whatever. And it's like suddenly you're, you know, you, you, it's just. That was, must have been just a super fun job. Right. With those days. All right. We're getting near the end. And uh, take us to now. Like, what are, what are you doing these days? This is, I mean, you know, this is an sure. opportunity to, you know, let, you know, I'm not, you know, Pies is a big company. So maybe there's somebody out there that hasn't heard of you. Though, maybe Pies. Way to spoiler it. the answer, Peter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean. <laughs> Well, as you know, I'm you know my company is is you know Paizo Paizo Inc here in Seattle where we do the Pathfinder and Starfinder games, uh, Pathfinder Adventure Card game. Uh, I have a great crew over there in Redmond, and we've been you know also a sponsor of Gen Con. Yes, yeah. Thank you for have your been business. Have been for many years. No, it's appreciate it. We appreciate it back because it's it's it is you know <coughs> it is it still is after all these years the most important convention. That you can possibly go to every year, and we, we, you know, we basically plan our release schedule around it and everything. Mm -hmm. and, and and you know, our customers, we have so many great customers come from all over the world, and we get to see them there and hang out with them for four days and play games and and just it, it's 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 an amazing experience, right? So, anyway, you know, we're we're uh, releasing uh, Pathfinder Second Edition is right. uh, coming out at Gen Con mm -hmm. this year. <coughs> I hopefully we don't uh, script uh, your. Your, your exhibit hall with too many long lines, but like you know, we've done that before, before too in Magic. But mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you know, so we we have that coming out. Uh, the Pathfinder Adventure card game has a new edition. Mike Selinker, you know, Mike, okay. mm -hmm. yeah, he's yeah. he's mm -hmm. he's designed a, a a kind of new version of the Adventure card game that actually releases like next week. Next mm -hmm. week, yeah, I think Vic, Vic works on it, so mm -hmm. uh, that's coming out next week. And then of course, we're all gearing up for PaizoCon. Which is when's that? PaizoCon's Memorial Day weekend, so not this coming weekend, but the weekend after. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's and in SeaTac at the Double Tree. They're all sold out, or somebody. No, we have a few. We do have a few tickets left over for, so for local sees people. So, so mm -hmm. yeah, when yeah. you're local to Seattle or the Seattle or Oregon or whatever you want to come up. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 a funny story how we came up with PaizoCon because we. At the time, we were going to some smaller conventions. I won't name which smaller conventions we were going to, but we'd lose a ton of money every time we'd go to those, these smaller conventions that weren't Gen Con. Gen Con was, was different. We'd actually make money. <coughs> and so one year, some of our fans had actually decided to make it something called PaizoCon. They, uh, they all got together on the Internet and said, come to Seattle, we're going to hang out. So about 50 of these guys showed up in Seattle and invited us to come over. Are you serious? Yeah, they invited us to come over and, and hang out on a Saturday and maybe do a couple panels or something like that. So mm -hmm. so we did, and we had so much fun. And then and, and then we lost, kept, kept losing money in these small conventions. I said, well, if we're going to lose money, we might as well run our own convention and lose money. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, at least then we control it and uh -huh. stuff like that. And this was so much fun having all the you know our, our fans up. And so from that first PaizoCon, we've, Second one onward, we've been running them, and they've grown from, you know, a couple hundred people to like over a thousand now, uh, wow. of our most hardcore people. And it's You're just, almost getting up to where you could <coughs> not lose money at them. Yeah, well, yeah. So, I mean, well, except we don't. That's not not the point, right? Right, mm -hmm. right. The point but, is hanging out and giving a, having a really great experience. So all of our employees go there. They run games. Mm -hmm. They hang out and talk. Right. You know, it's a great chance to just, you know. Just hang out with Paizo employees and, 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 and play games and things. So it's it's a it's a real fun weekend. It's really kind of focused on on, on our customers more than anything. So so I got to ask you, 
Pathfinder Second Edition. <coughs> that's yeah. that's a big that's a big move, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's scary. I remember when we did Third Edition Dungeons mm-hmm. and Dragons back mm-hmm. in the Wizards days. Uh, mm-hmm. Are you nervous? No, because I know my I, I I've seen the finished product. I've read it. It's really good. In fact, I can't wait to start playing it at home. Um, really? Yeah. That's, you're supposed to say that. Uh, no, that's true. It's true. It's true. It's really, awesome. I mean, they really mm-hmm. did some really cool things. I mean, it's still Pathfinder. It still feels and plays like Pathfinder. There's just anything some things that, that make anything it. Anything that you haven't announced that you could tell mm-hmm. us on I, our you know, show today? I, no. <laughs> no spoiler. I, we did a play. T- we did actually did a Can't play. Can't give us a little scoop, Lisa. Uh, sorry, Your old man. friend, Peter Atkinson. Give sorry, a you know, if I did that, they'd have Heard to kill me. Heard it first if they, on Fireside. The biggest leaks are at the top. If I did that, they'd have to kill me. So that would be bad. I mean, that's a grand tradition. I'd have to fire myself. But no, it's a grand tradition. I started that tradition. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're I, happy I, with I it. I actually, yeah, I, I am yeah. really happy with it. And uh, man, I got an amazing team over there. Mm. That just, yeah. They worked real long and hard, about, like mm-hmm. over, over three years on this. And uh, you know what it's like when you yeah. put together a new yeah. edition. It's, 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 you know, you, you want to be true to the, the past and, and, and mm. what's there. But you also want to find what the problems are, what, you know, what things cause people issues in their games. And having... Yeah. Ten years. That's the tenth anniversary of Pathfinder RPG, by the way. This year, wow. it came out in two thousand nine, since so, nineteen. So, so, how would you explain what's the changes, the adjustment in Pathfinder? It's, you know, yeah, in, I think it's, a, it's in a paragraph. How do you sum that I, up? I would just say basically, it's all about it's you know again ten years of of fan. That must be my phone. <laughs> hey, somebody answer Lisa's phone or turn it <laughs> off. Yeah, it's, it's, we're not quite done. Almost not done. 100%. Just give us a couple more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the uh, that's probably like my, my guys say, don't tell them anything. Oh, that was probably your staff. <laughs> that was probably Eric. Eric is on the phone. <laughs> like, no, no, get her out of there. Actually, they're probably going to give you a scoop. Yeah, maybe you should call them back and find out what. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you know, so when you have 10 years of playing a game, you have a lot of feedback from the, mm-hmm. from your customers, right? right? right. And, 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 and from yourself playing the game. And I've been you know, a yeah. campaigns the whole time. And so, you know, it's just, it's finding ways to keep the flavor and everything, but make it so it's just, it plays yeah. more fun. It plays mm-hmm. easier. It's easier to remember stuff. It's easier to just, you know, as a GM to come up with stuff. Well, and first edition was based on third edition D&D. Yeah. Right. And... And certainly, 3.5. I, yeah, three point five. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's very, yeah. It's I, very I dare close. the average role player to tell yeah. the difference. Though, yeah, by the way. I know. So you know, I think it's fair to say that um, uh, a fair criticism of third edition was that it just got a little bit too much into the math. So right. did you kind of do a little bit like what Wizards did with fifth edition? We're going to not talk about fourth edition because. <laughs> we'll pretend that didn't happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we didn't, but, we didn't go as far as Wizards did in terms of they they made a very fine. casual. They make right. a game that's kind of really great for the cash fan. We're still a hobby game. It, it, it's 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 a hobby okay. game. Where, you know where where mm-hmm. you know it's it's. I mean, the rule book so is you know is big enough to you know somewhere in between to beat off an intruder and so, stuff <laughs> like that. So it's 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 you know I think it's that's definitely right, that sounds good. But 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 you know there's things like oh there's just there's this innovation that we have uh, for the. Uh, action economy right it's it's called you know it's it's three actions and a reaction and it's just like it, it seems really simple but basically every turn what can you do you can do three actions and a reaction and so the three actions like okay i move this pull up my potion to drink it three actions right, right. it's right. real simple and it's just really easy to adjudicate it's not like is it a fast action is it a, you know is it a oh, yeah. free yeah. action right. is it a, good. Good. A, a move action I mean, that's you, great you not to worry about that stuff it's just you hear you, you heard it here first right <laughs> i don't think it's first <laughs> Oh, I, I, I think we heard it here first. <laughs> well, we right. heard it here first. <laughs> One more thing. One more we, thing. We, I wanted no, to. No, 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 no. We're out of time. Oh, oh damn it. Yeah. Okay. What? Make it quick. All right. Real quick. One sentence. We're, we're doing this really great uh, crowdfunding for the Kingmaker Adventure Path for, se- for second edition. It's coming out. Kingmakercampaign.com is how you get to it. It's uh, being. It's it's. We're we're blowing through is stretch RPG? goals. It it's a, a, it's a it's a big our adventure path campaign. It's a big okay. campaign sandbox okay. campaign. We you, right. can, you you start off as little peons. Good. That's it. Done. Thank you. All right. Uh, we got to go. We're on time. We're on time. <laughs> so, thank you, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to Fireside with Peter Adkisson. Thank you, Beverly, for being my co-host. Thank you, Lisa Stevens, for being our guest. Uh, thank you to Caldea, our sponsor, for uh, contributing the Caldea Film Studio for our use. And uh, also thank you to Gen Con TV for uh, broadcasting us. Next week, 
we will have Jim Lynn. Jim Lynn. Lin- yeah, mm-hmm. Jim Lynn is going to be on the show. Oh man. Oh my God. So I can't wait. He is. He ran R and D, which is the game design development department, Wizards of the Coast, for uh, for several years, mm-hmm. and was one and of the earliest people. And I was done. And working with and, with Richard out in Philadelphia, work, right? Work, yeah. So all mm-hmm. that sort of stuff. So okay. So and that will be next week, Wednesday noon. Until then. Please come and see Table Takes, which is uh, going to be Friday at 11 a.m., and uh, The Brothers Murph, which is Mondays at 5 p.m. on Gen Con TV. All right, that's all, folks. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye.